What up, it's Narox here. And this time I'm breaking down a modern sampler, Flamingosis. Myself and many others first heard of Flamingosis after his flip of a Hey Arnold track, which blew up in 2015. The track I am talking about is Football Head. Ah, 90s nostalgia. Anyway, the beat was reposted on a few YouTube channels like Triangle Music and Anime Vibe. Adding them up, the song has over 12 million views, which is insane for a beat. 90s nostalgia is truly an incredible force. But sadly today, I am not breaking down Football Head. The FL file got corrupted and I have to start the breakdown again from the beginning. But let me know in the comments if you'd like me to sped up that process and don't forget to subscribe. Now finally to today's breakdown. I am breaking down Down for the Fifth Time by Fleming Doses. which samples the fantastic song Down for the Third Time by Bobby Cadwell. The sample is on a 91 BPM and the C major key. So I set the tempo as 91 on FL, selected fit to tempo, so when I move the tempo to match Flamingos' beat, it will automatically warp the tempo to the new one. After that, I set the sample to stretch and lower the sample one semitone because the sample is in C major while the beat is in B major. If you do this and the sample is not on tempo perfectly, you can always toggle stretch and manually adjust it. Now that everything is on tempo and the key is right, I can start chopping the sample. The intro has a stutter pattern, using the first bar of chop 1 he plays it 3 times, then plays half of it twice. This equals the intro loop, which plays 4 times, with an automated low pass going through it. As the intro goes on, more high end is added. And to finalize it, he has the sound as a riser before the beat drops and some random vocal chops. This is the kind of stuff that adds the extra fluff that the listeners won't pay too much attention to, but it adds to the vibe of the beat immensely. After the intro, the beat has four different sections. Section 1 has two loops. Chop 1 is straight up an 8 bar loop. Loop 2 has 3 chops. Chop 2 1. Then chop 2 2 which plays twice. And the shorter chop 3 3 which plays twice as well. Here is loop 1 plus loop 2 in full. This pattern plays 4 times, with the last time having a variation with the bridge to section 2. I call the bridge section verse end, and it plays for 3 bars, so it just replaces the last 3 bars of section 2. Now to section 2. I have it here named as Chorus. It is a 32 bar loop. Overall for this part, it is just section 1 followed by section 2 played twice. Moving on to section 3, it is this 28 bar loop.
which is complemented by this four bar loop. This section has quite a few automations. First, a filter that cuts the lows in this triangle pattern, giving this effect of a filter that is closing then opening. The peak of the automation is at 50% because I will also automate a low pass filter that starts halfway through the first automation and it is a similar concept than the previous automation but with the reverse triangle. For the last automation there is a LFO on the last two bars. I did this effect by automating an EQ filter instead of actually using an LFO. Also the last bar is layered with a reverse crash which becomes a riser. Now for the last section. Section 4, or as I named it, the guitar section, is composed of mostly two chops. Chop 1 is a longer 11 bar chop, complemented by a shorter 5 bar chop 2. This pattern plays four times, then we move into the last part which plays until the end having a fade out to end the beat. This finishing section is just chop one of section four extended to a 16 bar loop that plays twice or to infinity because the beat fades out. And that is it for the breakdown. Listen, I could go more in depth about the effects that he used and the drum pattern, but honestly he just boosted the lows a lot on this track and sidechained his kicks so he could punch through all that low end that he boosted. Other than that, the drum pattern isn't anything worth a breakdown. His effects were really really nice, and the transitions are really cool. That is why I made a mention of the sweeps and transitional effects, like when he used the LFO. But the focus of the series is sampling, so I think I am going to do specific videos on effects, drums and other production stuff. And finally, please don't forget to support by subscribing because shit is hard to make and it is time consuming and time is money. Peace.